classes. You're on. Right. Nice work. Um, all right, so a couple of things. We've got the, um, the bunnies, basically face and head that I represent as a triangle. Then we go back down the curved part of his forehead into the ear, which I used like a long, thin leaf shape because his ears are padded down. Then I came with an S curve, you know, arcing up his back and then back into his puppy tail, which is very bunny rabbit like. And then I used this oval to represent the big um, back thigh. And then from that little oval, I put in a little bunny back foot. And you know, you could add toes if you wanted. I remember we had a bunny growing up at, called Funny Bunny, and his nails were super sharp, like could cut you like bad. Like I don't know if we had we were supposed to trim them or something, but like like it would go like this, <laughs> or it was like scratching itself, and the nails were like intensely long. So I mean, I mean, it might not. You don't think of bunnies as having like claws, <laughs> like you think of more cats having claws, but bunnies have them too. So anyway, I added some claws on there. It may not be the best move ever. Um, then we went from the tip of that back toe to the elbow, because they're pretty close together. And now I just have to finish you know, the elbow into the front, front paw. And now how are we gonna like connect them, you know, from, it's just like human. So it's like, you go from the, um, you know, your chin to, you know, underneath your chin is your neck. So we'll put the bunny's neck in here. And then the little belly, belly the bunny belly which will connect up in the bottom um cool i am like kind of happy with my bunny um I, we can take two minutes now and you can like put this bunny in an environment i know that i i mean the cliche is that bunnies like um carrots a cliche is something that's like really conventional that's like so obvious that everybody knows about that you almost don't want to use it but i mean i like I like drawing carrots. They're, they're like long triangular or orange or beautiful colors. My dogs love to eat them. And then I'm gonna put the, uh, put that green, the sprout part that goes in. Carrots are a root. So the plant grows above the ground and then the, the part, the carrot part that you eat, the orange part grows below. So this is the plant part, loving that. Yeah, can it, anybody help me out? Do I need anything else on here? Ooh, um, there is like an indication of a shadow. Look at how there's shadow in the belly. And I think I've talked about this maybe in this class before, but I'll, I'll mention it again. If you wanna make something look 3D without actually having to um, draw multiple sides, I'll just do it right here. So you draw a square, you draw a circle. One of the ways that you can suggest the light is just by darkening the line. So you just draw the bottom of the circle and it, sh and it, makes, the, it makes the circle look 3D. And then you draw, thicken the line on the side of the box and it makes it look like the light line is in the light and then the darker line is in the shadow. It's like super easy. And like, if you're drawing a bunch of things, you want them all to look like they have the same light source. You know, you just draw everything on the right. You can do it with block letters too, like R, <clears throat> A, B, B, I, T. So I just, those are all regular. And then if I imagine that the light's coming from the left, I'm just gonna shade the, the left side of everything. And all of a sudden it looks 3D. I mean, it's kind of fun. It's right the side. Shade on the right, right side. side. Well, it's the right side. Ooh, I made that one too dark. Oops. I feel like you get the point. Anyway, the artist does this. Um, he makes the, and it is a he, by the way. Um, it's a guy, the, guy named, the guy that drew this piece is named Kit Ray. Nice bunny. Oh, that's awesome. Um, he's looking good, guys. Yeah, let's show him. <laughs> nice, Kate. Hey, Trevor, do we know who is, whose name is what with a question mark? <laughs> I don't know whose name is what. You can you can raise your hand and me. Say your name. I just changed up the name because you're going to participate. Um, Ellie, you're going to participants. Click on your name. 
Elliot. Yes. And then okay. click to rename. Like I can rename to. Yeah, I let people rename themselves. I mean, I feel like. Like yeah, I can rename Elliot. Elliot. Thank you. I mean, I can call yeah. you Elliot, or I can call you. Thank what? you. I was just taking attendance. Yeah. Um, okay, so the last couple of seconds, I'm just gonna add some shadows. Shadow to the bottom of my bunny tail. Shadow to the belly. Shadow. Yeah, you know, when it's not really a shadow, I'm like, I, it is a shadow. I'm just darkening the line. Thank you, uh, tech support, by the way, if you're still here. Maybe even the bottom of the baby, of the bunny's mouth. Oh, Ruby, that's so sweet. Very nice. <laughs> and it's got a little friend. Yeah. I love that. All right, so I made my bunny blue with a white tail. Let's see, Madeline. Oh. <laughs> Is that a bunny house? There's a whole garden for your bunny. <laughs> All right, all right, team. This is put out, this is good. We're off to a good start. Um, let me zoom back out. Yeah. We'll see if we can find another image, and then we'll kind of. Kate, let's create, take a look at that. Hopefully, we create, Ooh, create missed you, Kate. World. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah, if, you if raise we your don't hand, recognize your. What's your um? What's your question? No, I was just going to say, if we haven't um, like, seen your art. Like, uh, oh. well, it's all right, Luke. You can, you can go, go ahead, on. Madeline. Um, I think I see a hidden picture. Yeah, what is it? You do? Um, it looks like a fish or a shark. I see the snake. This one? Okay. So let's do, let's, uh, we might be able to do, oh, yes, we can do two at one. All right, so that was good. We found a snake, which I see the snake. I've done this. I've done this one before. I just haven't drawn everything. So the snake is down here, and then the fish is up here. And conveniently, both of those are on the, like in the same area for making the drawing. There's also the swan. If you go back up to one of the trees, there's a yeah. swan in the tree. I hope I can find the frog, because I want to find the There's a the swan, the, I think. Sister, like, yeah, that's the swan. Um, I'll give you a hint. The frog is upside down. And this frog is really close to the other frog. <laughs> I see it's near the it's near the it's near like yeah, the jaguar's like right, tail right, right there. They're like the frogs are right next to one another. It's like they're looking at each other. This one's like on the ceiling, looking down at the one that's on the ground. <laughs> all right, cool. Maybe ooh, maybe we'll do all three of those. We've got room for it. Oh my gosh, all four. There's the swan too. That, this is very convenient. <clears throat> um, all right, so let's go from. How is there? A, sorry, how is there a shark there? Sharks don't live in the forest. No, they don't. <laughs> There's like it's more forest it's, animals. It's There's a hidden image. Anything. It's just hidden. But there right. all there these things. Could be anything. To... Um. All right. But, I'm gonna. But most do, of these go things from... go in the forest, and this like. Correct. Yeah, and the snake is a forest creature. The I don't even know. I guess the frog would be. There'd be like tree frogs up there. And there'd be frogs probably around the waterfall and stuff. Um, okay, I'm going to sketch the snake first. I want to get the snake out of the way. I don't really like snakes that much, um, but they're actually really fun to draw. Um, so I like to do snakes. Um, Which there's, there's snakes we use a lot of X curves. Yeah, you, you can use the S-curve. Um, so sometimes you can do the snake. Well, let's just do the S. Let's just do the S in the middle. Then we'll add a tail and then we'll add the head. So let me move this over a little bit. So I see the S right here. So I'm going to do the S first. And so the, then when I draw the S, I'm going to draw the top, the, the top of it. So this is the top of the S. And then I'm gonna do the bottom, knowing that it's gonna be a little bit thinner at the top and get thicker in the middle and then get thinner as it approaches the tail. Whew, this is an interesting way of doing it. Um, all right, so the tail seems easy for me. So I'm gonna put the tail, attach the tail, a little triangle at the end. And then even though the head, the, the, the um, you know, the snake is all the same kind of thing. And it's just like, there's no legs or 
you know, wings or any appendages. Um, I still think about the net, the snake as having a neck portion and then a head portion. So I'm going to straighten out the body. And then at the very end, I'm thinking about it having a neck and then I'll add the head. And strangely enough, the head itself reminds me of a triangle or, or an arrowhead. Um, yeah, a triangle or an arrowhead. Cause I think they're, they're kind of flat on the bottom. Then we'll do an eye at the top. And we won't see the eye on the other side, but there'll probably be a little bump on the head because if you look at a snake's skeleton, um, there is a, you know, like a zygomatic arch and an eye socket. Like there is a skeleton that will protect the eye and, and the eye socket you kind of see on the top bump. You can do the, um, I'll switch to red for this one, even though it might not even be red, but um, I was gonna do the, um, the little um, forked tongue, you know, snakes have one tongue. Well, yeah, they have like one tongue, but then it forks at the end. And I think it splits to increase the surface area of the um, sensors. I think it's, you know, I think it like tastes the air and can sense other creatures. <clears throat> uh, looks okay. like a snake dragon. Excuse me? Snake dragon. Yeah, Luke. Excuse me? Yeah. Um, I actually know what they use. They put out their tongue and it's, they, actually they don't, they, their slits, even though they have slits sometimes, is actually not where they smell. They nice. actually so they smell have not, they have with not. their tongue. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. But then, but I do. So what is their, what is the um, nostrils for? Just to breathe air? I, I would guess. Yeah. And their noses are up. The they can go like. To breathe air? They use the tongue to um, sniff out other creatures, and then the they get more taste when they first get in it to um, an another animal because the fork part of their tongue has more um, taste buds and stronger taste buds than the back of a tongue. So they taste more when they're spitting to an other Thank you, Kate. Um, I'm just gonna point out this one thing to help decorate. Right now, we, there's no decoration on the snake and the snakes have the most beautiful patterns. All over the world, they have different patterns. The one thing I wanted to show you is this concept of bracelet lines. So if you think about the thickness of the snake, you um, should do, you he, should do the snake kind of has snake. a flat, what's that? You should do a Christmas snake. Okay. Yeah, I can do a Christmas snake. I'm assuming you're referring to just like red and green. Um, but the snakes, they seem like they're cylinders, but they're, they're, they're like half cylinders. So their bottoms are kind of flat. So if you think about it, almost like a wagon or like a, you know, I don't know, like a loaf of bread even. So the decorations are going to come up the side and then across the top and then down onto the other side. So that's what I'm, this is kind of like how I'm thinking about it. It's coming up the side and then arches over to the other side. Up the side, arches over to the other. And you know, these are, these are what you typically call bracelet lines. And they're called bracelet lines because if you show your wrist, yeah, you know, I hear you. bracelet goes around your, your wrist and they, the decoration kind of follows those same arches. I love this Christmas one. Great idea. Thank you for that suggestion. <clears throat> um, I might put a Santa hat on the top of him. Is that okay? <laughs> is your snake's name, uh, is your snake Santa Snake? Uh, I, I, he is now. <laughs> this is Santa Snake now. <clears throat> All right, a couple more minutes on here, and then we'll switch over to the shark. Even though I wonder what kind of shark it is, maybe a reef shark. One of my friends, his son, like, I, I mean, I've never seen, he's the kid's like five years old. He knows more about sharks than I think most um, PhDs should call him. Switch to red. Now, 
Now that I'm thinking about it, there may be some snakes that have patterns that run the whole length. And I'm thinking about the underside. So sometimes some of their scales on the underside are like change color or are white, are like are lighter. So there's, I'm gonna darken the bottom of my snake just to suggest, even though the artist didn't do that, I think it's nice to have, you know, a, a slight shadow on the ground where the snake is in contact. And we could do some grass. Snakes lay eggs too, don't they? Do they build nests? I don't know. Great. Like These are great. Um, that bunny's great too, Kate. I didn't really see your snake, but I saw the bunny. Oh yeah, the sun, the setting sun on the world of the snake. Great stuff. <clears throat> I can't think. I don't know. I got. I think I got everything here. I'm a snake. Um, shall we try the shark? We've got him right over here. Um, I think we shall. I'm gonna move my. I'm gonna move my shark over. Or maybe I'll just get a new sheet of paper. Yeah, I'll just get a new sheet. I'll turn this one. All right, shark fans. I'm going to switch over to a blue. <clears throat> Is everybody ready, by the way? Good. Okay. Nice. Lots of thumbs up. Um, the, the theme for today seems to be triangle heads i should have, maybe i'll just like lessen that like triangular heads um and we're going to try to find all the different parts of the um you know this fish's body so we'll let's do i'm going to make mine pretty big so the sharks have these like really kind of curvy foreheads and then a little nose first you say shark then you say fish now you say shark again. Which one is it? Is it shark or fish? It's a shark. Uh, I think sharks are fish. Well, yeah, but in the in the in the thing, it's a shark. Yeah, yeah, it's labeled shark underneath. Um, it's not necessarily anatomically correct, but it has. It's well, well, we can make it look more shark. In fact, I feel like the tail. There's something about this tail that would look more shark-like if it. Was there you go. Bigger. Yeah, because it doesn't even have, like, sharks don't really have, like, fish-like fins. They have, like, they aren't see-through. Yeah, they, exactly. They have, their fins are, their, their, like, top fin, dorsal fins are not um, textured. They're, like, solid. Okay, well, we'll, we'll make this. <laughs> I mean, the third rule of Mitchell School is that you've got to maintain artistic independence. So... I'll draw it my way, which will probably be a little bit different than the way this artist drew it. And you can draw yours different than both of us. All right. So, but I'm, I am trying to pick up characteristics that I do know about sharks. And the one is this kind of curving forehead into the nose. And then the other thing about this is like the shark, the best thing about the shark is its, uh, its mouth and its teeth. So I'm gonna like show its mouth at least. And then I'm gonna run along the body. <clears throat> and I'm gonna kind of call this the head because this, this, the um, gills are gonna be behind that. It's like, I guess the gills are kind of on the neck. I also think of sharks, I think of like these cold, like dead eyes. And I see them as like perfectly round. Whereas this, the, 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 the eyes in the little sketch don't really, they're not really round. <laughs> um, I'm gonna draw some triangles for the shark teeth. Yours look scary. Thank you. Sharks are very scary. How's it going up there? We're, we're moving. All right, so then now from- How about the... you draw an eyebrow facing down? Ooh. So you're uh, but you draw an 
eyebrow facing down. Um, you know, like when you think about sharks coming at you, um, you know, not in like real life, but like in a bad dream or like in a movie, you know, you like show waves and then you see like a shark fin sticking out of the water. I feel like we need to really pull that, pull that out of your memory, of your memory bank, because this fin on the drawing is not very scary. Now this shark fin, if I saw this one coming at me, I think I would be scared. Most sharks on the back of their dorsal fin, they have like these little um, cuts in it, like triangle cuts, and that makes them go faster through the water. Sweet, I love that suggestion. I think I've noticed that before, but never knew what they were. Um, all right, so I got my gills, I got my the dorsal fin, I got the side fin. We're gonna come under. Um, so this is basically from the fins down to the tail. I'm gonna call it like the, I, mean, I guess it's just like the, like almost like the legs, but the, it's the lower half of the body. And then I'm gonna do a tail fin that's like taller at the top and smaller at the bottom. I don't know what kind of shark has that, but I know they exist. So I made a huge, a huge blue shark. I'm, I'm, ex I'm happy with this one. Um, I also think about like great whites where the top of the shark is darker because all the fish living, swimming above, he wants to be camouflaged with the, the water and the ground below. And then when he's swimming above fish, he wants to be camouflaged with the light of the sky. So when ah. you're at the bottom of the shark, it's gonna be light on the bottom. And then you see the top of the shark, it's going to be dark. Interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so this guy's, he'll be a two toner. Two toned. All right, well, it's official. This is the best shark that I've ever drawn in my whole life. <laughs> I'm not, I, I haven't really drawn that many, but this one is the best. Um, okay. You might want to darken the eye because uh, um, yeah. you colored this so like, dark that you can't see the eye now. I know, I think you're totally right. Hmm, that didn't work. What if I should get a pen? I think the pen covers up uh, colored pencil. Yeah, it mm -hmm. does. Um, okay, yeah, then also I'm looking at the top of the fin, the side fin. I bet the top of that one is light, is dark, and then the side of it is going to be, or the bottom of it is blue, or is light. Nice. And I don't think I have any white, but I do have a gray. I think the gray shows up. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got two minutes. You can draw. You can turn this into anything you want. You can draw other fish. You can draw other. Um, you can draw other um, sharks if you wanted. Kind of want to draw a baby shark, like a mama shark and a baby shark. Fin, body, rounded forehead into the nose. I'm gonna make this guy's mouth closed. The um, shark fin and the side fin, I think are even, and whether they are in real life or whether it's just in my picture, the, the top fin and the side fin, I, I lined up. And that seems to make sense. Maybe the mommy fin is teaching the baby shark the mommy shark is teaching the baby shark how to hunt for food. Yeah. So we should be yeah, and this because the also... baby shark's mouth is closed and the mom's shark's mouth is opened. I used to do a um, earlier this week. Have you guys ever read the book? I'm sure I know you've heard the story, but there's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. The um, this one artist who won like this award, he um, 
it was so nice. It was like in each one of the compositions, you know, the, 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 the Goldilocks goes in and there's like a bowl of porridge. There's like a huge bowl of porridge, then a medium sized bowl of porridge, then a small bowl of porridge. And then there's like chairs. There's like a huge chair for Papa Bear, medium sized chair for Mama, and then a small one for Baby. And then she's like, you know, she like, she like messes up all the chairs, like messes up everything. Um, but in the book, it was actually really nice to have this like large, medium and small theme kind of like repeating throughout. And it's just like, it just worked really nicely in terms of all of the compositions. So I'm kind of thinking like, maybe I'll make a big, maybe I'll make a big shark, then I'll make a medium sized shark, and then I'll make a small baby shark. And then we'll get three tries to make, um, you know, a shark. Well, actually, in Goldilocks, the porridge is one super hot for the papa bear, one's medium hot for the mama bear, and then one's like cold for the baby bear. Now, I wonder how you would represent the temperature. Like, if you're going to draw a temperature, how would you do it? Maybe it's steam. Yeah, like would the like amount steam. of steam. Steam. Like, I would add steam. I wonder if he did that. Let me look at this. You would have had steam, and then for the cold, you would have like lines to represent ice. What a what a missed opportunity by the artists. This is yes. the. Uh, it is. This is or the scene. So this is Papa Bears, Mama Bear, yeah, Baby I've Bear. I've seen that book before. Yeah, yeah. It's like this book is really, really famous. Um, the, there's like millions of copies that were sold. There's like he draws books all over the place. Um, it's good. I mean, it's a good. We could draw this if you wanted to. Should we draw this? Let's finish the sharks and we can talk about it. How much more time do we have, though? We have like a whole half an hour. Um, like, what oh, if you we did, did it. The, what if we did the swans? Yeah, uh, we can stick with the theme. We should stick with this theme because um, th these drawings are actually really good and they're really inspiring me and and obviously inspiring you guys too. It's a nice page, Luke. Who, who's that one with the, uh, with the boat? I can't see your face here. Yeah, these are Madeline. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you are so good. That that one, that, the cat that's fishing for the boat, that they, uh, the boat Blue. is full of balls. Nice, Luke. The red. These are red. Mm. All right, I let's see, Ruby. Gray bottom. Swimming along. Quite nice. Right, one more little guy. Oh, Kate. I like those colors. Kate's got that sunset action. Yeah. Um, maybe next week we will look at sunsets. Um, this week, I've had like three students make sunsets and want Spencer. to So next week, maybe we'll look at skies and make sure you have colored pencils next week. Great. Thank you, Spencer. Um, I made, did I make my shark too big? You have a question, Madeline? I don't really have a question, but I'm really good at drawing sunsets because I have a beach house in New Jersey and whenever I go there in the summer, there's the most beautiful sunsets in the world. That's oh. The sunsets are might be my favorite, one of my favorite, um, you know, th things of nature. I mean, I love, there's a bunch of stuff in nature I love, but sunsets is, is, is high on the list of favorite natural phenomenon. I love the yes. moon. I love following the moon. I love full moons. Yeah, what's up? Spencer. Is that Spencer? Um, I'm, uh, I'm in I'm in Smith Island and every night, not just in the summer, but every single night there's a beautiful sunset. Oh yeah, nice. All right. So I guess that's that's the consensus. Um next week we will be drawing sunsets. So I'll have a really beautiful photo. Um, and then make sure you just have your colors so we can practice going from the sun, which is yellowish into orange, into red, and then the red into violet. And then the violet actually turns into blue, depending on the time. Um, Ruby? Yeah. Ruby? I just realized I have scissors that kind of resemble a shark. 
and like they got red ink on them, so it looks like they were just eating some fish. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the red ink definitely looks like blood, and I'm like, should I put blood in the water? I don't know. It's like a little. Spencer, the yard and the water look beautiful. Well, if you put blood in the water, that means um, like a fish or something, another animal is dying, and sharks are really good at smelling blood. So if they smell blood, they will go and like track the scent of the blood and then go eat the rest of the animal yeah they're smart and talented is that a talent smelling or is that more of like an ability yeah i think that is like one of their best talents it's an interesting concept ability versus talent. i don't know if it's i think it's one of their talents but it's also just an ability if you're just a shark yeah um okay that's good should we try the swan party people let's do that swan um or actually if we stay in order we can do the frog Let's do the frog and then we'll, we'll stick in order. Oh, right. did I just see an acorn? That was a fun acorn. Excuse my interruption. No, it's, you're great, Stace. Thank you for keeping track of it. Um, so I know it's a little conventional, but I think I'm going to switch over to a green pencil. Um, and then I'm, we're going to stick with this theme of, uh, I'm, I'm going to draw my frog really big too, by the way. Um, I have all this paper down here that I have not really been using. So I'm just I gonna think I might it. draw mine life size. This one would be life size, actually. If you, like, it may be a small frog. Oh, I have so many toads and frogs at my house in the, in the summer. It's like, I love them, but you almost have to be careful when you're walking the dogs because you can like step yes. on them. I've never, I've never stepped on one, but like, it's only because I'm like super aware of it. It's like a fear. It's like a big fear stepping on a frog. There's so many of them. These look great. This is a nice, that's a nice page, Lou. Um, ask to unmute. Oh no, I don't need to ask to unmute. All right. All right. Um, so the triangle that I'm putting here is at an angle. And the mouth, if you look, is at the is at the bottom of this triangle. So the nose of the frog is way bigger and the jaw and the mouth is smaller. Um, and then the ridge of the eye is actually um, above all of it. So now frogs and toads will hang out like underwater partially. So like their noses are stick out of the water slightly and then their eyes stick out of the water slightly where everything else is below the surface. Um, I think snakes are kind of like that too. Um, so I'm gonna put the nostril in this top corner, rounded, you know. Alligators are also like that. They have their eyes and their snout above the water, and then the rest of their body is like under the water. Did you say alligators? What did you say, Kate? You were turned into a robot. <laughs> I said alligators. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alligators. Turtles. I think, I think alligators and frogs Crocodiles. have a lot in common. Also, crocodiles and turtles. Yeah, no, turtles. Oh, yes. Um, all right, I'm going to use a big round circle for the eye. Um, frogs' eyes are really, I think, one of the most interesting parts. And then they big eyelids and they close their eyes. Oh, they're, they're wonderful. Anyway, I'm just going to do really basic shapes at first and just try to figure out what I'm looking at. And then we'll kind of decorate it later. So um, I'm going to go from the frog's head I'm going to transition a little bit um, in the back where his neck is. And then just like this rabbit, um, th there's like kind of, he's got like a curving back, which then leads us down into the frog's tail. Now, when the frog was a polywog or like, you know, like in an earlier phase before metamorphosis, he had a really long tail. So there still is a little teeny tail suggested um, that, that's left over. Um, from that early phase of development. 
Um, so I know it's not like a, a puffy rabbit tail like the rabbit, but it still is, it does turn the corner back there and it's where the um, bottom of the pelvis is, like the spine ends, you know, with the tailbone and that's where that is. So it's not like a tail that he can wag, but it's definitely exists and, and we're looking at it right here. Um, all right, and then <clears throat> similarly to the cat, to the uh, rabbit, frogs can jump really high. So in terms of the percentage of how much of a frog is legs, it's a lot. You know, it's like more than half of the body and it depends on the type of frog. I mean, you can lift up some of these frogs and you have their body and their legs like hang down, you know, like a foot. I mean, depending on the frog. So um, you wanna think about your own legs. So you go from your hips to your knee and then your knee to your ankle and then you have your foot. So imagine if you're wearing flippers, you know, like, like scuba diving flippers those are like almost like huge frog feet. So think about the way humans have legs and we're gonna draw them just like the frog has the same one. So follow me here. So the, up here, we can even put it up here. This, this little point here is the knee. So his hips are down here by his tail. So the top of his thigh runs up. So it's hip to knee. And then if you go all the way back down to the tail, this is his heel or what I would call his ankle. So you have the curve of the thigh, it's from hip to knee, hip to knee, and then knee to ankle. That's the next one that we have to do. So knee to ankle, these are like his calf muscles. And they're just like a big, almost like a big parentheses. So you don't see the bottom of his thigh. That's interesting too. So you see the top of his thigh into the knee, turns the corner. Then you go down the mm -hmm. front of his shin, back down. And then you see his calf muscle back here. So the, the front of your, your, your lower part of your leg is your shin and the back part would be the calf muscle. And then this is like, I wouldn't call it a missed opportunity by the um, artist, but this is an opportunity for you in the sense that these frog feet are gonna be really fun to draw because they're webbed. And this artist seems to show like three toes. So I'm actually thinking about I'm actually thinking about flippers when I'm drawing this. Just because when if you haven't swam with um, foot flippers, it's a game changer. Like get if go to the pool, try to find some. You can swim so fast when you have those flippers. It's just like Sounds, you're, you're yeah. like, why have I not been swimming with this my entire life? I can swim five times faster than everybody else. Now it's awkward to walk around but it's, uh, it's very, it's very good to, to run. Well, with flippers, um, basically you're not allowed to walk with them on the pool deck and things right. like that. Right. Cause then the bottom of them will get ruined and then you won't get like, um, and then you won't get as fast. Right. Yes. Yeah, and depending they, on where you are, you, not you walk, can don't only walk, walk it's a bad idea. backwards. Oh, that's interesting too. Walking. If you're if you're in a situation where you're getting ready to get into the water, it's suggested you can only walk backwards in some situations. Oh, yeah, I've seen like scuba divers when they're on the dock and they walk backwards and they like fall in. It might right. be, it might be because of their flippers. Yeah, you know, if you walk forward, you'll likely trip. I went scuba diving in Thailand, and I don't really remember how we got off the boat. I think I just jumped in. Um, all right, so I can't believe how much the um, the frogs the frog is feeling kind of like a human. So when we think about our own arms, that's what we have to get for the frog. So it's going to be shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, and then instead of having a human hand, we'll have a frog hand. And that and i'll show you what i mean right here so um you think about your shoulders so shoulder to elbow now you don't get to see the shoulder quite as much but you do lord knows see the um the elbow so this is elbow it's going to come down into the wrist and then that wrist where is it going to give him um his frog feet flippers on the front does he, get, does he have flippers on the, on the on the on the front or just really in the back? Yeah, he's got does he he's got like fingers in the front. Maybe I drew that wrong. 
Um, anyway, so we went from elbow to wrist and then wrist to hand. Um, the elbow, you want to go back up into the shoulder. And I guess he's got this like really small upper arm. Um, I don't know, are these bullfrogs, but what are the ones that have these big round throats that they that bellow out? Bullfrogs. Bullfrogs, yeah. Nice. So I'm going to put that bullfrog in there. Because it looks good. All frogs have this, but they don't always have it out. Yeah, all frogs have those. That's that's what they. That's what makes the sound when you hear them. Um, that looks I don't good. know what's called. Spencer, that was good, man. And okay. the front of a frog's uh, the hands, like the feet, have do have those pads so they can grip. Mr. Messick, I, there you are down there. Good to see you, boss. I, I, I didn't get to see you earlier. Um, okay, so here, here we are. We've got all of the parts. We got the frog's mouth. We've got the frog's nose. We've got the frog's eyes. We have hip to knee, knee to ankle, flippers on the back. I made flippers on the front, which it, it looks wrong to me. Um, but maybe I can fix it and give him some claws or something. He's got this well, nice climb. And, um, and then I think well, frogs have like bumps and warts and like things that make them like blend in with the ground and the dirt. So I'm going to put some texture on his back. Um, and that's the thing. Is it a frog or is it a toad? I think it says it's a frog, but I'm kind of drawing a toad. And I think it's okay. I mean, I mean, I know it's okay. This is my frog. I can tell what I'm Did you know that a group of toads is not? A group of what? A group of toads is called a knot. Nice. I did not know that. Hey, what's up, girls? Um, you all, you all can come in. I'm just finishing up the Zoom class for like nine, ten minutes, but I got some hidden pictures for you. Um, I think you can go about finding those. The way we do it here is that instead of um, oh, you can, um, instead of finding them, you can color them in, but um, draw the little picture, whatever hidden picture you find. You can sketch it. And then I'll be, you know, this is Twist, Twist is here. Yeah, yeah, just uh, 12 o'clock, noon. Perfect. We got an, we have an in-person class that came in a little bit earlier. How's it going? What's your name? What is it? Leah, I'm Trevor. Nice to meet you. And then um, Mrs. Twist, we can do uh, name tag too. Let's take a look at that, Luke. Long time no see. Oh, very nice. Hold that really still. What's that, Dave? Very nice. I was talking to Luke. I was taking a picture. Very right. good. And the other thing I wanted to mention to everyone, you know, Mr. Twist talked about artistic license. And then he said, well, I wonder if these hands should fan out like the feet. And whether they should or not, really, really is up to you, to the artist, to make it look like however you would like to make it look. Hey, you can do whatever you want in art. Michaela, let's take a look at that. Yes. Nice. I'm so happy with the colors. Nice yeah. Blue, nice blue and color. Madeline. Let's hold that nice and still, okay? Yeah, it looks great. Great, great. These are really wonderful. <laughs> Layla, I didn't get yours. Oh, Ruby, I like that bright yellow on a lily pad. Nice. So if you would like to have your parents send these to Mr. Twist, that's always, always appreciated. Um, I have one more. That looks really good too. What are all those? Hold on, will you give me a little closer? Look at that. Okay, what were there all those little ones? 
What are those? Those jellyfish? <laughs> yeah. You're that's that fish looks a little scared, Eric. Oh, Luke, um, Spencer. Very good. nice, Madeline. Loving it. Um, I, did anybody else add? Maybe I should add some brown. I feel like let's see that. Oh, Brayden, nice. Sorry, it's Brooks. I forgot to rename it. Oh, looks kind of like a dragon. Kate, very nice. It's so cool. Uh, so yeah, these color pencils, um, sometimes you can like add actual texture. Other times you can just like color it in, like fill it in. And they typically, typically you can blend two colors together. Sometimes you can blend a third, um, but usually it, it stops at two. <laughs> Green frogs. All right, can you think we can squeeze in one more? We got like five minutes. You guys got it in you? Should we try one more? All right. <laughs> Which one should we do? Let's do the swan since we were talking about it. Which one are you guys doing? What? Okay. Are you doing the right one or the left one? I don't know what I do. So the one on the, the there's like a cartoony one and then there's a forest one. Whoa, I never knew that. Did you guys ever did you guys hear that? No. You can, you can tell your left hand because if you put your you put your your finger and your and your thumb makes an L. But if you can't tell oh. direct, if you can't tell what direction L goes in, it's not helpful. <laughs> and that's kind of hard sometimes too. Okay. That that could have helped me some years ago. I did <laughs> I not know. know that. I know. It's a nice trick. All right, here we go, team. What if you, the problem is, what if you don't know when, which way the L goes? That's exactly my point. <laughs> if, it's, if, it's, if you're like, I'm dyslexic, I'm dyslexic, so like this, this looks the same to me. Like this one like looks in this direction and then this one looks in that direction and they're like, they look almost like the same thing. Um, I know because I've been looking at it for so many years that this is the actual L, but this is the same thing. It's just a vertical and a horizontal. So like the marks are exactly the same. Um, all right, here we go. I'm going to start with the oval of the body. I usually do that with birds. Nice. Thank you, Kate. <clears throat> Kate is looking good. Um, so I know, we, I know you guys might be tired, but we only have four minutes. So I'm going to try and squeeze it in. So we got the oval for the body. And then a lot of times with long necked birds, there's this um, trapezoid, which is just like, it's almost like a little triangle, a miniature triangle that is almost like an ice cream cone attached to the oval. Like the oval is the ice cream and then the cone comes off of it. Then we can do the S curve, similar to the snake, but more elegant. Um, starts thick at the bottom and then S curves into a, a nice little thin, connection um, until you get to the oval of the head. And then to maintain that same angle, we're gonna add a triangular beak. Ooh, that looks actually pretty good. <clears throat> um, so we got those parts. Now this, un unlike the other animals that we've drawn today, um, there's not a whole lot of detail, um, you know, there's just not a lot of details, a lot, not a lot of anatomy. So in one sense, it makes it harder because there's less to do. But in another sense, it's easier because there's less to do. So I know that birds have wings and I know they have tails. So the theme today is we've gone from the, the neck, we've followed kind of down the spine into the tail. So I'm gonna add a triangle for the tail here. 
and then I can't tell the difference really between the, the um, wings. Yeah, you know, I think these are wings. Mm -hmm. This is the bottom of the belly. Is there, would there be a wing back here? Maybe there'd be a second wing back there. I like that. And what's really interesting about the swan, even though we can't see it, it has flippers just like the frog. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, we go from knee to ankle and then it's ankle to the bottom of the foot. And L and most of the birds. Yes. Wings. So I gave the flipper, I made it look a lot like the frog. So it's, I haven't really, I, I honestly, I didn't mean to choose these for all their similarities, but they did really have a lot of similarities. I mean, mm -hmm. you got a triangle for the, um, you know, the snout of the, the snout and the head of the frog. You got at least a triangle for the beak of our goose, you know, triangle for the rabbit head, triangle for the snake head. It just seemed to like work. We have about one minute if you want to do a screen share. Yeah, should we, should everybody, let's, let's show, let's show what we got. And um, we had, I had a kid in my other class yesterday. She didn't feel like sharing and you don't have to share, but um, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop the screen so we can see everybody else larger and Stacy can take some pics. Hey, what's up girls? Welcome back. Let's see Welcome that Jacob. Um, nice. Well, Claudia, will you? Uh, so Hold on, you know, Jacob. Can you pass that marker pad of marker paper back to the girls? Let's see, Madeline. No, the whole pad. Very nice. Yeah, Thank you. Awesome. So when you Let's find it, just step it, and then we'll can color it and mark it later. Okay, Luke. I, have, I got one more minute to and then we can do it. Then I'll be open. Okay, let me stop the share, everybody, and then and then I'm gonna have to go pretty soon because we have the um. I have another class coming in. All right, stop the share. Yes. I'm almost finished drawing the school. Can you keep on sharing for a little bit? Um, yeah, dude, that looks great. That whole page is fantastic. Kate, that sunset's amazing. Brooks, the name, I like that. We get a, a few of, what other else is in here? Michaela, that looks great. great. Jacob crushing it. Everybody's crushing it. Let me pin Jacob. The ad pin. Madeline, it's really beautiful. Goose. Ruby, beautiful goose. Jacob, that's that's awesome. Um, I like those feet. Um, having the um the left side and the right side match up, having the legs and arms be symmetrical, really important. Um, Luke, that whole page is fantastic. Um, thank you, everybody. I mean, I'm gonna go back and make sure I can see everybody else's stuff. Stacy, did you get to the sketch today? Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Uh, Madeline, you're still on mute, babe. Were you talking to me? Okay, good. Um, all right, well, that's it, y'all. It's 11.01. I will see you next week and we will be doing um, a, ver a variety of skies but definitely um, sunsets and probably some other cool things. Maybe some storms, maybe some clouds, maybe some suns. Yeah, Eric, the, you did the, the squirrel. I'm loving it. Um, all right, that's it. I'll see you next week. Keep drawing. Draw as much as you can. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye, Thank you. Thank you.